the sociobiologist, futurist, author, Rebecca Costa. Uh, Rebecca, thank you for coming back. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. Greatly appreciate I want to talk to you about some of the economic effects of COVID-19, effects that maybe people don't think about. Uh, kids dropping out of school, economic impact, mortgages not being paid, marriages falling apart. What do you think about when you look a year, two, five years down the road? Well, fortunately, we have a lot of information from Nobel winning, uh, 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 prize winning economists on the mental health impact. We now know that any prolonged period of time of, uh, of involuntary unemployment will cause people to not feel as happy in the future as they did prior to that period of unemployment. It turns out that we're a very resilient species. And even when terrible things happen to us, we tend to come back over a period of time to levels of happiness and fulfillment and thriving that we had previously. So even in the most dire conditions, most people don't succumb to PTSD. They learn to live with it, cope with it, and, and their happiness returns. There are very few things that we have studied over 50 and 80 years in longitudinal studies that affect your happiness where you never come back to the previous levels of fulfillment and happiness you enjoyed. And unemployment happens to be one of them. So rather than look at that as an indicator of economic health, we need to begin looking at unemployment figures as a, um, as a clue as to what will it will foretell in terms of mental health issues. So what if this is as good as it gets? I think I remember that from a movie at one point. Um, the isolation, the mental illness um, in young people. I'm talking about the impact on young people, even kids in elementary school that have been isolated from their friends, their peers. I still hear about parents today that have their kids basically locked up at home. They won't let them go anywhere. It's a year later. They've seen nobody for a year. Their parents are so paranoid that somehow the, the virus is going to create havoc or kill them. They're not allowed to leave anywhere. The long-term emotional damage has to be serious. We have to remember that in the 1950s and 60s, sociologists began studying what happens when people can't go to work and when they're at home uh, and they're, you know, they're not able to go out, uh, travel, so on and so forth. Uh, there were numbers of studies and we began to call this the leisure society. We thought that with all the automation that was coming, uh, that people would have so much time on their hands, what would life be like? Of course, sociologists were terribly wrong because we have less, uh, uh, you know, uh, unassigned leisure time in, human, in, in all of human history right now, even with all the automation that was supposed to take care of all of that. In a way, we can look at this isolation, we can look at this unemployment as a prelude for what the world will be like as robots begin to take up 50 to 70% of current jobs today within the next decade. This, these, this is the forecast. And so in a way we need to look at the COVID shutdown as a prelude to what is it going to be like when uh, robots force unemployment and force shutdowns. Sure. Of course, that's been an argument since the 1970s. Robotics, you know, we were told that General Motors and Ford, there'd be nobody working there within 15 years. Of course, that's proven to be completely untrue. So I think every time one industry shows um, change and shuts down, others open up. It's been my experience. Um, the Leisure Society, though, gives me an idea that it didn't work out that way. We were told that cell phones would give us freedom and peace of mind. And what we got was an electronic tether. So you couldn't even go to the grocery store without somebody bothering you. Leave me alone. Okay, I'm, I'm better now, just for a moment. No, no, that's um, right. That's correct. Uh, none of yeah. this automation, uh, you know, whether it's your dishwasher, your, your washing machine, your cars, your cell phones, none of this has led to additional leisure time. You're spot no. on. No, all, all of those machines, by the way, are friends. They all talk to each other, right? All, all those machines. And so they know what I'm doing. It's like they're stalking me all the time. I'm mildly paranoid. Yes. It's okay. Um, yeah. But I, but I yes. did see a really interesting thing on 60 Minutes. 
I saw a thing on 60 Minutes. I was like, hold on. I, I, the, there were robots dancing and robots jumping and robots running over uneven ground. Uh, Boston Dynamics. It was one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen. You've seen the same. And as much as I think it's fascinating, it's also frightening in its own special way. Well, we, you know, we've seen too many science fiction movies where the robots take over and they no longer need the human beings. And, and you know, in a way that's made us afraid of technology. Uh, but, you know, regardless of whether we're fearful and whatever our prehistoric emotions are, they're rather irrelevant because robots can do so many things that humans can't. And one of the best examples is that there's an organization in Australia ha that has developed drones that can plant 100,000 new trees a day. 100,000 new trees. Now, if you don't think that that's a solution to climate change, then I don't know what you're smoking because the reality is they're building 10,000 of these, uh, these drones and they're going to be able to plant a billion new trees a year. And, and that's what mm -hmm. I think the public doesn't hear about. They don't hear about all of the fascinating and good solutions that these robots can, can uh, produce. Much more important would be if we had robots cleaning up the ocean of garbage in our oceans. Probably far more we important, do. but okay, maybe we'll we get do. there too. And, and See, maybe we'll get there too. You know, and it's not science fiction movies. It's Pink Floyd albums, Welcome to the Machine. You see, so it's a different place that got me all concerned about the robots. I'll give you the last word. Well, I'll tell you, we're already depending on robots. I tell people, if you walk in your house and you ask Alexa, what's the weather like? And she says it's going to rain in three minutes. I bet you're going to grab an umbrella or a raincoat. So there you have it. Well, I, you might be right, Rebecca. Thank you for being here. You're always fascinating and always fun to talk to. And I appreciate you being here every time you are. Thank you. Thank you for your coverage.